I don't understand this obsession that Kareem Hunt is going to be so productive and where he's going ADP wise. He is the second running back in the, on the Browns. He had an outrageous amount of touchdowns. And people love to talk about regression for quarterback touchdowns and receiver touchdowns, but they don't want to talk about Kareem Hunt's regression is due for touchdown wise. He's not going to have double digit touchdowns again this year. And I think that the offense is going to be way more explosive in a lot of ways because they're going to have a healthy OBJ and they're going to be utilizing the tight ends a little bit more. So all those things take away some of his catches, take away some of his usage. And I think Nick Chubb's going to have continues to be the top running back in that backfield. He got paid accordingly. So for me, I think that Kareem Hunt has a, a value that's good, but not a guy that I'm necessarily drafting to be my RB3 or my flex. Yeah, completely disagree. So his ADP is RB22. He's He is an RB2. Last year, he finished RB10. Again, that's with games with missing Nick Chubb. I don't care about that. I want to talk about the games where he played with Nick Chubb, which is why I'm convinced he is still an RB2 in this offense with the way Kevin Stefanski runs it with the split that Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb have. With Nick Chubb, weeks one through three, he was the RB12. Okay, we're talking about with Nick Chubb on the field, the RB12. Weeks five through eight, he was the RB10 with Nick Chubb. And then with Chubb again from weeks nine through 17, he was the RB19. The fact is this, right or wrong, Nick Chubb doesn't get to catch the ball. And Kareem Hunt isn't only on there on passing downs. He also gets a couple series of games to himself. They do like him in the goal line at times. So while I think there might be a little bit of a bigger split, to your point, in the red zone when it comes to a Nick Chubb and a Kareem Hunt, Kareem Hunt is still going to be involved enough in this crazy run-heavy offense of Kevin Stefanski where the entire offense revolves around this backfield. Kareem Hunt has enough talent where if you give him 12-plus touches a game, he'll finish as an RB2. And his ADP being RB22, I'm 100% with that as I have him ranked at RB23 this season. Go ahead, you can rebuttal. No, I mean, I think that you kind of hit me on the head in the sense that you have him at 23. Um, I think that there's not so much where I think he falls as the RB is where I think he's getting drafted in the ranking wise. I think that he's going rounds way earlier than I think that he should because I still think that he's still a splitting time running back. Well, right now, he's typically going in the back end fourth round, early fifth round. That's exactly. typically where you would have a low end R running back go. So that's why I'm kind of confused as to why he's a bust there. Because I think that there's a lot of – right there, I think that you're looking for more upside running back or you're looking for a receiver that you're solidifying in your lineup. I like the receivers in, in, in round five. We kind of saw in the last yesterday's show. Cream Hunt is somebody to me that if you're going to take him in the seventh or eighth round, I have no problem with. It's the round four or five that I'm going to de- I definitely debate because I think there's other guys clearly more valuable to have on your team than a second running, second running back in the system. I'd be perfectly happy with Cream Hunt being my, you know, RB3 type, even a low end RB2 if I went heavy receiver. And I actually have to correct myself. So if you go to BillyFantasySports.com where you can see my rankings, I actually have Cream Hunt, and I forgot I updated my rankings down to RB29 now, uh, about seven oh, behind the eight. About 70, 80 behind the AP, yeah. So that actually would suggest I'm a little bit on your side. I still don't think he's a bust where he's going. I still think he has tremendous upside, and we know what he can do. Even though he didn't, I don't think he actually played well without Nick Chubb last year, but he was still a top 10 running back during that stretch anyway. I think that says something of himself. He still has that upside in case something happens to Chubb. He's still going to be involved. I just wouldn't have him in my bust area. I'm fine with where he's going, although my rankings would actually more point to your side, as you pointed out. Uh, we go here to bust five, keep the list going. So I have Miles Gaskin as my number five. Now, here's the thing about the Miles Gaskin, why I have him as my fifth guy. I don't have him ranked significantly different than the ADP. Um, I actually have him only one or two spots, I believe, behind ADP right now as I'm trying to pull up my list in front of me because my screen, of course, always goes blank. I should love technology. Miles Gaskin, I have at the moment ranked as the running back. 23 and his ADP is RB 21. So I have him two spots behind the ADP, which doesn't sound like a big deal. But sometimes when we talk about bus, we talk about guys that I see a pathway in which this could not go, you know, the way we expect miles Gaskin will, I believe will be the starter. And I don't think it's a stretch to say, obviously he'll be the main pass catching guy, but there's a couple of things that worry me. One, I don't think he has the build the last 17 games as a starter. Two, I don't think he's that great of a running back. I think he's okay at what he does. I think he's a guy who's better suited for a platoon role. 